Are you blocking grace in your life? Today we're going to talk just about that. Don't go away. Today in our meditation moment, we're going to focus on a beautiful passage of scripture where a young man who truly wants to follow Jesus stops him and said, Oh, good teacher. And Jesus stops him. So we're going to go to Mark 10, 17 through 30, and we're going to talk about grace. We've been talking about miracles lately. We've been talking a lot about, you know, how we can open ourselves up to prayer, peace, grace, gratitude. And this all falls in line with spiritual warfare. What we need to know in all things that this grace is unending and it's constantly there. It falls on everyone. And what do we need to do to receive it? So let's put ourselves in real quick. And we're going to talk about how and what happens. Grace falls from heaven. How do we receive it better? In nomine Patri et Filio et Spiritus Sancto, sicuerat in principio et nunc et semper et secula seculorum. Sancte Michael Archangelae, defende nos in prelio, contra nequitiam et insidius diobli, esto presidium. Impedit ili Deo, supplicis te pecamur tuque. Princeps Miletia celeste satana malios quae spiritus malignos. Qui ad perditionem animarum per vagantur in mundo divina vrectute in infernum detrude. Amen. So, grace. <clears throat> As we look at this passage right here of Mark 10 through 17, we look at the story of this young man because Jesus is on the way. He's on the move. He's journeying town to town. He's preaching. He's doing what he does best, which is teach with parables. A young man runs up. He's all excited. He says, oh, oh, good rabbi, good rabbi, tell me what do I need to do to inherit the kingdom of God? He's, he's really excited. And Jesus goes through the litany of, you know, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, you shall not da 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 goes through these things. And the young man says, well, teacher, I've done all these things. I have followed you. And he looks at the boy and very lovingly says, you cannot call me good. God is good. I, however, am here to help you and remind you that you're only missing one thing. And the kid looks at him and says, okay, what? What am I missing? He looks at the boy. He said, you must go and sell all your possessions and then take that money and go give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. The crowd, everybody's gasping, going, whoo! Because they knew this kid, he had a lot of money. He came from a wealthy family. And the boy looked at Jesus, and he looked at the ground, and he went away. So sad. This is the hard thing. It's a very, very hard thing to understand. When God takes the time to speak to us specifically to those things that we want to hold on to over him, over his promises, over our time with him, we tend to think <clears throat> in very pragmatic, logical things. Well, you know, I don't have to totally give up this. I don't have to totally give up that. <clears throat> Jesus, excuse me, folks, I've been very, very sick, and I'm just starting to get over having a little bit of a head cold. I think I'm going to go back to the center camera because it, it, it's better here, and you can see me and hear me. When we look at the scripture here about grace, and also, if you're new, I'm hoping you're going to get something from today's meditation moment, something that's going to inspire you, make you think, make you look for that light of Christ wherever you are in your life, because this gospel, among many other gospels, this one invites you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, <clears throat> in your walk, to open your eyes. Open your hearts, open your ears, and receive grace, okay? So, my name is Sister Farah. I host the Sword of St. Michael channel now, Meditation Moment. I'm looking at doing more live videos in the future, more shorts too. 
there's lots of lists in here about everything from ghosts, demonic, oppression, narcissists, the list goes on and on. But check us out here at Source of St. Michael. Give us a like. Please subscribe. And I love comments, okay? <clears throat> now, this is going to be pre-recorded, but I will be on, and I will be chatting with whoever's in chat. So, please, write your comments, post your suggestions. I love them. Back to the topic. So anyway, the guy, the kid moved on from Jesus. He was absolutely bummed. And, and the crowd's asking, well, Jesus, you know, that's a hard thing for anybody to do. And Jesus looked at the crowds and he said, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is much easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Now, there's many instances and many theologians that believe the eye of the needle, per se, was a small gate next to one of the larger gates that only people could pass through. So in other words, people with huge camels that were laden down with clothing, things to sell, things, you know, that they were bringing on their journey, they could not pass through the gate called the eye. It has other allegories too. <clears throat> but I think the one that's most important here is for us to understand that if we are carrying certain things like a camel, we can't get through the eye. And if we're going to look to enter the kingdom of heaven, God does not want us to go without. God does not want us to live without. He wants us to let go of those things that prevent us from receiving grace. And this is what we want to talk about today. It's not, you know, the person that has all these riches and has all these wealth, this wealth and can do whatever they want that is going to have such a time to get into heaven. It's what they are attached to. What are we attached to? In our meditation moment this week, I'd really like us to think about what is it? What are those attachments? Because <clears throat> in other videos that I've spoken about, whether it is oppression, it's narcissism, and how it, the masks, you know, reflect the demonic in our world and attempt us to become it, just as evil and as empty as, you know, their souls, their spirits, what, you know, these immortal beings. We're talking about grace here and the beauty of the grace that basically is available for everyone. If it's available for everyone, this means that all things... All things are possible with God. And this is what Christ's message was to the public. All things. Not just one thing here, one thing there. Maybe you can get saved here. Maybe get saved there. Maybe get saved there. All things are possible with God. Your faith and your eagerness to receive grace. This grace. This great grace. Whether it is... And we can go into spiritual gifts another time because there's so many. And there's so many misinterpretations to the spiritual gifts and different people are going to have different interpretations. I'm going to give you a very short little block of what sort of gifts you may be receiving as grace, such as um, joy. It is so difficult for many people with all the struggles that they have in their lives to find one or two things in the morning to be joyful about. Yeah, we have things we look forward to. We have things, oh, yes, I'm going to get that job done. I'm going to get that project done. Oh, I'm going to see my friend later in the week. Oh, it's my birthday. There's these little things that we look forward to. But I'm just talking about the joy of a two-year-old that just got his first hot fudge Sunday, or just stepped out in the rain and splashing in a puddle and the water's going everywhere and that water feels so good between your toes and it's splashing on your face and you're just sitting there going, ooh, this is delicious, this is fun, oh my gosh, where did that go? Where did we leave that behind? Who said we were supposed to lose it? We're supposed to come to Jesus as little children why can't we go out and enjoy the rain barefoot? Why, why can't we find those things that we used to find so joyful? If it's a, a hot fudge Sunday, if it's rain falling, maybe it's, maybe it's being at your grandmother's or your aunt's and being able to hold a goose for the first time. 
and petting the softness of its feathers and feeling it just tremble. And you just got so excited. You're like, oh, wow, this is the most wonderful thing in the whole world. Or maybe, maybe it's getting your first chicken egg underneath the chicken for the first time and not getting poked. Maybe it is, um, maybe it is looking into your child's eyes when those little eyes first open, when the child is first born. And it's just the most miraculous thing that's like, wow, I made this. This is my DNA. Maybe for those of us that don't have children or a lot of relatives, maybe it's something at one point somebody put their arms around us when we were going through a rough time, we were bullied, we were picked on and said, I'm going to be here for you. And you welled up inside because it felt so good that one person believed you, cared. In that moment, your heart just swelled with joy. Where did that joy go? Where is that joy today? Why can't we receive that joy every single day? day. No matter if you're looking out the window and seeing birds, grass, there are so many great gifts of grace just looking outside and looking at nature. How about if somebody cooks you a home-cooked meal? Not something instant, pour it out of the box, throw it in the microwave. There's a lot of joy in eating really good healthy food. <laughs> I have to say, because I love to cook. And it gives me almost more joy to cook the food than to watch it disappear in five minutes. How about, and that's just joy. That's just little things that just, just, just bring us up so much. It can be a person. It can be a moment. It can be a thing. We need to open our hearts and open our hands to that joy. If someone can be a support and a joy to us, how much grace could we receive by stepping back and seeing someone that maybe doesn't deserve our time, doesn't deserve our attention, doesn't deserve our love, but they really, really, you know, in your heart of hearts, that person really needs a hand a gesture. Maybe, maybe they need a blanket, a cup of coffee. You don't know until you say, God, open my heart to fill the need that I may receive the joy that you have specifically for me. Like I said, that's just one grace, joy. Other graces. How about the grace of just being love, being love. What does that mean? It's really hard in today's world. People are hardened. We have very difficult schedules. We have so many problems, so many, shall we say, responsibilities. We have a lot of things in our day-to-day -day life from everything from cars to houses, apartments, bills, family, we have so many things that tear us. And this is the heart of today's message of the gospel. What are we attached to? Are we attached to making sure, boom, 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 checking off everything on our list and finally, oh my gosh, I can finally have my cup of hot cocoa and relax, kick my feet up and go to bed. Or maybe for some of it's like, oh my gosh, I finally can have a little sip of whiskey and the world's going to slide on by. Or maybe it's, you know, we're one of those like, whew, I just want to sleep for the next 20 hours because sleep is what makes me feel good. Um, we all have those things. We all have those things that we work and work and work and work and work and push ourselves. What are we pushing ourselves to? Let's ask ourselves that. If this thing, if these people that we're pushing ourselves for so hard just to make sure we get to the end game, is this going to create greater peace and joy 
in our life? Are we going to have more love to give? See, grace is unending. Grace is this continuous flow. It just keeps going. How does it stop? When we don't give it away. When we close our hands, we close our minds, we close our hearts. We just say, yeah, they don't deserve it. I don't like them. I don't need this. I am just going to, I'm going to be contrary. I'm going to be contrite. I'm just going to be, okay, I'm sorry, but I can't go there. I can't do this for you. I am not available. I close myself down because I just can't. It really means you won't. It means instead of trying to see where's the grace in this moment with the person, with the job, with the situation, the grace is right there flowing. All you have to do is open your hand to receive it. We cannot force other people to receive our joy, to receive the grace that God has. However, we can share the gifts of joy, happiness, love, um, devotion, work, servitude, effort, um, reflection, meditation, uh, joy of working, the um, just we have so many different things we're passionate about, our relationships, our volunteer efforts, our children. Grace is sharing those. Grace is receiving it and then letting it go again receiving it and giving it away receiving it and finding another home for it and this sometimes it's just not easy there's so there's so much in this world sadness depression envy greed hunger the lists are innumerable how we get attached to those things that may not always be 100% good for us, but they are our focus. They are our goal. Whether it is to um, reach so much money for our 401k, whether it is, well, you know, I've got to run that 27k because you know what? I got to get myself in shape and I'm going to look so good. I'm going to be so healthy. Nowhere, I want to tell you, nowhere in the Gospels does Jesus ever say, hop on a treadmill and let's see you go for 40 minutes. Let's do some aerobic exercises. Come on, 12 apostles. Let's. He never once said exercise. What was his form of exercise? He walked. He walked. His clear message for us today. With God, all things are possible. Okay, so with God, if we say, okay, God, I'm opening up my heart to you. Jesus, come and live inside my heart. I need some grace. What is it that you think you can't do, but God said all things are possible? Are you fighting cancer right now? Are you fighting a broken heart from a child that is addicted, perhaps dead, perhaps non-communicative? Are you fighting over whether you should continue to pray for a broken marriage? Are you praying just for a job so you can support your family, so you can feed those mouths? Are you praying because you're caught in a natural disaster where there is no help around you and you don't know where you're going to go? I want to tell you I'm praying for you tonight. When we think about all the things that we can give, all our material possessions, all the things we can do with our hands, we can volunteer to share, to help, to build, to cook, the greatest thing that we can do is forgive and be what another person needs in that moment, in that situation. And we cannot force grace into another's. But we can pray grace, more grace, for another that is suffering. 
And that, I think, if we understood the power of our prayers, especially repetitious prayers, that's why I love the 54-day rosary novene. If you guys don't know what it is, put it down there and I'll tell you all about it. That's miraculous. That is groundbreaking, wall-busting miracles. You pray the 54-day rosary novene, you're going to see miracles like you've never seen before. Might take you once, twice, three times. With me, it took me six years, but I saw a miracle I never thought would happen. We have the ability, and a lot of people think, well, you know, you can't just sit there and pray over and over and over and over. Yes, we can. Christ said so. When that woman kept pestering him, he's at a banquet and her daughter was possessed. She comes in and she's like, Master, please heal my daughter. And he's like, go away, you're a Gentile, I don't have time for you. And then she's tugging at him, please, you have to heal my daughter. I, excuse me, I, I'm here, you're a Gentile, you need to leave. And she says, Master, the dogs underneath your table, get your scraps. Can't I ask? And this is how we have to pester God sometimes. You have to ask and ask and ask and ask and ask. And eventually, he's going to say, excuse me, I hear you already. And he may not answer your prayer in the way you want, but I guarantee you, you're going to get an answer that gives you such peace and gives you such hope and gives you such joy that you're going to continue. Because that's the beauty of prayer. And just when we think that our prayers aren't being answered, we get these little consolations, then a little bigger consolation. And we're like, wow. And our faith starts growing. So that's what I would wish for you this week in our meditation moment. Let us not look at our infirmaries. Infirmities, infirmaries. I'm sorry, I got a head cold still. Let us look at those things that we can do and that we can look forward to. Let's not look at what, oh my gosh, I've been such a failure at this. You know, I, I, I keep falling back. Even Paul said, I know what I'm not supposed to do and I keep doing it. We're going to fall. We're going to run short of every single mark. Try not to be hard on yourself. Try to look at yourself like God does. Don't laugh too hard. Because he's probably going like, oh, goodness, honey, what are you doing now? But say, well, this one keeps trying. This one keeps trying. Look at yourself as we're on this great journey. And I want to thank you for coming along with me and being a part of Swords of St. Michael today, tonight. And I'm hoping you find some more videos that might help you get a little clear viewpoint. If you need some prayer tools, if you go over to Etsy, prayersbythebead.com also, I have lots, like if you have a favorite saint, like St. Pio, any of the favorite saints, I have pet tags, I have key rings, I have all sorts of things. And if you need something especially blessed, pop me a note and I can, I can get it blessed. If you need deliverance prayers, go to the Swords of St. Michael website, www.swords of St. Michael, because... We all need help from time to time. I want you to remember, thank you so much for joining me today in our meditation moment on Mark 10, 17 through 30. All things are possible with God. Here at Sword of St. Michael, this is Sister Fair Rose over and out, reminding you that battle's already been won. Hopefully this channel is here to help you win the fight and win it right. God bless you. And I am praying for every single one of you. And good night.